Hello everyone and welcome to ML Dawn. It doesn't matter where you work, if you have data and you want to extract actionable knowledge out of it, you need machine learning, my friend, trust me. At this day and age, no escape from it. Now, the applications of machine learning are potentially limitless. Namely, you can go all the way to the stars above and in the field of astronomy, where you could build a machine learning algorithm that could, interesting enough, predict the trajectory of a meteor in the space. So, and, you, and it could predict whether, like, with what probability it's gonna hit the Earth or not, please God no. All the way down to the applications of machine learning to the realm of cells and molecules. Namely, for example, you could say, um, you could use machine learning to predict the type of protein that a certain chain of, chain of amino acids could build if they fold onto one another in a certain way. Yes? In particular, I'm very interested in the applications of machine learning in the realm of healthcare. Now, in this project at ML Dawn, I want both of us together to join forces and build a machine learning algorithm that could drum roll, ready? Detect tumors and brain MRI images. There it is, cat's out of the back, yeah? It's very exciting because if you could facilitate this process for doctors, you could save lives, you could make the process of saving lives faster, you could maybe correct certain mistakes that doctors would, could make. Certain doctors might just, you know, out of, you know, just being, being inexperienced, dismiss a brain MRI image as a healthy one, whereas the person could actually have a tumor and a malignant one, yeah? So, this is very uh, a very tangible area in real life, let's say, and the output of your research, the output of your product, could really, you know, save lives and make an impact in the society, to the community. Now, I'm very excited about this because if you join me on this journey, at the end, you could actually claim that you know how to build a brain tumor detector. Yes, and that's very exciting. Now, in particular, I'm, I have to assume, you know, I have to assume certain level of, uh, you know, knowledge on my audience. I, I've listed out the, a number of um, areas that I'm assuming that you're familiar with, yeah? So, for example, I'm assuming that you, you're familiar with the idea of object-oriented programming. So when I say I'm going to create a class, when I'm going to say I'm going to create an object of a class, I assume you know what I'm talking about, right? Now, number two, I assume that you know how to code in Python and you're familiar with working with certain packages, namely matplotlib for interesting visualizations or numpy, where it makes working with arrays of numbers in particular very, very easy. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you know the basics of PyTorch. Now, I know some people prefer TensorFlow, but honestly, I've been a big fan of uh, PyTorch and um, I, I have no intention of going back to TensorFlow, to be honest with you. Now, let me zip it. I don't want to say anything bad about it, but I really prefer PyTorch for all the good reasons, um, namely the easy coding and very helpful uh, you know, command line error messages. And an amazing community, absolutely amazing community. Every time I've had a question and I posted on PyTorch.org, I swear to God, it, in less than a day, I will get a very detailed response. So I assume that you're familiar with PyTorch and how to code in PyTorch. Um, I'm also assuming that you have the rudimentary knowledge of machine learning. Namely, when I say I'm gonna train a model, I'm gonna test the model, I'm gonna create a validation set, I'm gonna create a test set. This model is overfit, this model is underfit. I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, I'm gonna cover all of these ideas in the project, but I'm just assuming you've heard of these ideas and you're sort of familiar with them, so that it wouldn't be a shock, okay? Um, next, next thing I'm assuming is that you have Anaconda installed on your system because you know i'm gonna give you the specifications of the model 
uh, sorry, I mean of the system that I'm working with, so that you could actually uh, reproduce the same environment on your own system, so that you could actually follow every step of the way with me without any problems. So it's as if you have a replica of the exact system and packages and versions of packages that I have on my own system so that you could replicate everything exactly how I do. Now, what will you achieve out of this project if you come with me every step of the way? Number one, you will learn how to explore a data set, how to study it, how to get comfortable with it. Um, you will know how to build a PyTorch customizable dataset class. Because, you know, if you look at the, the examples out there, everybody's using very simple datasets such as MNIST, Passion MNIST, CIFAR, but sometimes you want to build your own dataset. You, you, you're dealing with a very random type of dataset and you want to build a PyTorch class that could give you the necessary um, functionalities to work with that particular data set. You'll learn all about that. Number three, you will learn how to work with a data loader and what a data loader really is and how you could pair a data loader with a data set class so that you could iterate through your data sets during training, during testing, during validation of your model and all this pair of data set and data loader will make your life a lot easier and you're coding a lot more concise and just to the point. You will learn how to build machine learning algorithms, in particular a convolutional neural network. Now, hopefully, maybe near the end uh, of the project, I'm thinking of adding more models, say kernel models or I don't know, random forest tree-based models as well. But for now, let's just say the tentative list is that you will learn how to build a convolutional neural network. Now, next is you will learn how to not evaluate a machine learning algorithm. You see how, to def how you can define a validation set and how you could use that to avoid overfitting so that on the test set you will have an amazing performance. Um, well, by amazing I mean as good as you could actually get. But the point is you will learn how to avoid overfitting so that the generalizability of your model would increase. The model will um, be able to generalize the knowledge it has gained from the training set to the unseen data, to the unseen test data. You will learn how to professionalize your code in, at the very end, meaning that you will create certain directories um, in your home directory, you will put certain supplementary functions and files and classes and data in certain separate folders, and you would make sure that the whole package of your brain tumor detector um, is in line with the standards, with the world standards, so that any stranger who's not familiar with your code, with one glance, they would realize what to do uh, or how they should be, how they could run your code, right? So because it's, it, it's, it follows a standard. And finally, you'll learn how to upload this, upload this, um, your, your code, your brain tumor detector on your GitHub repository. And if you don't have a GitHub repository, uh, just create one. I think I'm going to actually create one in the project to just help you follow the steps. And you can say that, you can brag to your friends, you can show it off as a brain tumor detector that you have on your own uh, GitHub repository. Now, I'm very excited about this, to be honest with you, excited, double quotation mark, uh, doesn't even begin to describe how I feel about this. This is the first project uh, series uh, at ML Dawn. And I'm very excited about this. I have printed ML Dawn on a pillow back there and I've actually put up my guitar over here just to make a nice background. I'm very excited about this. I hope that you guys will enjoy this, uh, this project and I hope that you'll join forces with me at ML Dawn so that we could do this together and really learn something practical. So if you're ready, I'm ready too. Let's do it.